one of the most successful streamers of this generation. I almost slipped on my way here. <laughs> Collecting well over 27 million followers across all her social media channels. This gives Pokimane an enormous amount of influence, not only over her fans, but also over the companies she works with. But although Pokimane is loved by millions of fans online, she also has the same amount of people, if not more, hoping for her downfall. So why is that? Is it all just jealousy driving the hate train? Or is Pokimane herself to blame for the hate that she's getting? When you look at Pokimane's content, it's pretty bland and pretty much inoffensive to everyone, but somehow she keeps getting herself wrapped up in various controversies. Which means that at least some of the hate that she's getting is definitely self-inflicted and that Pokimane has to take accountability for that. On the other hand, there's also a hardcore group of people that will hate her regardless of what she's actually doing and will jump at the chance to attack her. So let's first look at the self-inflicted hate, since recently she generated tons of it with a foolish move that was completely avoidable. You see, the biggest streamers on Twitch have absolutely feasted on the battle between Mixer, Twitch and YouTube, which left them very rich, fat and lazy, to the point where they basically created just a sit and watch meta, also known as the react meta. And Pokimane happily hopped on this trend, where she was watching full episodes of TV and anime series, thereby clearly committing copyright infringement. This pissed off so many people in the Twitch community and even spilled over to creators on YouTube, since everybody could see that this behavior was going to negatively impact the entire platform. Pokimane even tweeted very casually that she was knowingly violating copyright law, thereby ruining the platform and that publishers would have to react at some point. So then why even do this? It's almost as if Pokimane is saying here, I did it because everybody else was doing it and we were just waiting to see when one of these companies would finally stop us. The level of arrogance involved here is astonishing, because she got a multi-million dollar deal from Twitch to stream exclusively on the platform, and now she's engaging in behavior that will force major media companies to take legal actions against Twitch, which will hurt smaller streamers. Pokimane is putting the platform under immense pressure, and the only thing that Twitch can do is ban her. However, she knows that Twitch does not want to do this, since they've already paid her millions of dollars which means that any serious ban will only lose Twitch millions of users since Pokimane has around 9 million followers on the platform and all these users generate millions of dollars in advertisement and subscription income. This is simply A-level asshole behavior and one of the main reasons why Pokimane was already facing major backlash before the other incidents happened. So Twitch ends up giving her a 48 hour ban, which is an absolute joke, but they simply can't give her a longer ban since this will hurt Twitch more than it will hurt Pokimane, and she knows this. Now another way in which Pokimane quite recently angered the online community is by falsely copyright striking and threatening other content creators. She did this to the Quartering channel on YouTube, where she circumvented the DMCA process built into YouTube specifically for this, and she had her legal team contact him directly. By having her legal team circumvent the DMCA process, she's showing very clearly that she knows that the video is not violating copyright law and falls under fair use. Because a correctly filed DMCA complaint takes less than a minute to complete and gets the video removed very quickly at no cost. But having your top level lawyers engage in communication with another creator takes days if not weeks and costs thousands of dollars. So it makes absolutely no sense to do this unless you really want the video taken down and you know you can't do this through the DMCA process. Now sadly, Pokimane is actually known for this behavior because throughout her years as a content creator, Pokimane has abused the copyright system many times and this has generated tons of hate towards her, not just from other content creators, but also from their fans. At one point, she received so much negative attention from this that she had to release an apology video promising to never do it again. And I honestly regretted even starting an argument in the first place. So I agreed and the video was taken down. This was my mistake because at the time I didn't consider the fairness of leaving that video up as well as not properly understanding the fair use defense when it comes to transformative content. It's crazy to see that a person who files a copyright strike on a video for containing images of a tweet is the same person who streams whole episodes if Pokimane was truly concerned about protecting the copyright of fellow creators, she would have never streamed Masterchef and Avatar, but it's clear that she only cares about copyright law when a video critiques her. Now I can keep showing you instances of copyright strike abuse and the attacking of sponsors of fellow creators, however at this point it's very clear that Pokimane has angered the online community on both Twitch and on YouTube for years now and it's a major driver behind the hate that she's receiving. 
So this idea that Pokimane is only getting hated on because she's a female streamer is complete nonsense, since people have a legit reason for being angry with Pokimane. Now with that said, her being a woman does play an important role in the hate that she's receiving, but it's a little bit more complicated than just being a girl. It actually consists of three parts. You see, the most difficult part of being a Twitch streamer is getting noticed, as it is much more difficult to blow up on Twitch than it is on YouTube. And the Twitch policies and employees play an important role in this. For years, female streamers like Alinity have broken Twitch policy over and over and were never punished for it, while at the same time, male streamers were permabanned, sometimes for even the slightest infractions. Female streamers have gotten away with showing nudity, engaging in animal abuse, and dozens of other serious TOS offenses, and nothing ever happened. This began splitting up the Twitch community in female streamers plus their fans, and on the other side, the more hardcore gamers and angry creators experiencing this double standard. A lot of male streamers got angry seeing genres as hot tub streaming and ear licking ASMR skyrocket, with the female streamer hardly putting in any effort, while at the same time, they were trying to climb the diamond in League of Legends solo queue. So whether or not you like Pokimane, it was very clear that Twitch staff played an important role in policing the platform, and that women could pretty much get away with murder. This is one of the main reasons why there's so much hate towards women on the platform, and thus against Pokimane. This feeling of inequality on Twitch is boosted by the second reason for the anger towards female creators, and that is simply jealousy. Female creators simply grow way faster on any platform than male creators because of a simple advantage. Beautiful women have an edge over men and other women when it comes to content creation. I know that the correct thing in society today is to pretend that this is not the case, but that would be the same as saying that being tall is not an advantage for being able to make it to the NBA. Both of these traits are God-given and yes, it might be unfair, but it's simply how life works. Some female creators are even getting donations for just being horrible at their audience. Five dollars a month! How are you have hours of time to watch me and not five dollars? All right, everyone in the chat's making me depressed with all their fuck sad fucking sob stories about how their life is over and they can't afford five dollars a month. This all leads to the belief that female streamers are unworthy for their success on Twitch since they are either not good enough at gaming or because they hardly game at all and just watch online content. In the past, we've seen the rise of the likes of Zoe Berger playing games in pretty much her underwear and twerking on camera for views and donations. But the current queen of this sort of content is Amarand, who as you can see here, really likes to show off her tongue, amongst other things. Now with well over 5 million followers on Twitch, Amarand shows that just being pretty and showing off your body as a woman is more than enough to dominate on Twitch. Obviously, Pokimane worked her way up the ladder by playing thousands of hours of League of Legends and Fortnite, and she's actually become quite good at the game. However, she still gets placed in this category of streamers that are simply pretty and don't have to do anything to be successful. However, it doesn't help her case when she streams full episodes of Avatar and just sits there. Now, I'm not saying that female streamers should be punished or prevented from using their looks to be successful on the platform. I'm simply stating that some female streamers are using their looks to their advantage and this has led to jealousy and hate towards the entire group. This brings us to the third and final reason why there's so much hate against Pokimane, and that is good old fashioned hate. If you've ever been on Twitter, you know it doesn't take much to piss off 2 million people online. This is classic 21st century online life, and people are all too happy to join in a good hate raid. It's like watching a house burn down or a massive car crash on the highway. People simply can't take their eyes off of it, which means that when you add someone like Pokimane to this ecosystem, who does have a bit of a mom slash Karen attitude towards minor things, this taps into people's anger towards authority, teachers, parents, you name it. He then changed his Twitter profile picture to a photo of me without makeup to further harass me. So these three fundamentals all came together perfectly in the Pokimane vs Gideon situation that escalated into a full-blown legal proceedings from Jessica and Tyler, aka Ninja Blevins. Ninja is threatening to sue Pokimane. We are considering everything. Defamation of character at this point, we are getting our legal team involved. You are spewing lies to tens of thousands of people. You know Twitch, you claim you know his rep, then you know from them that Tyler never reached out to anyone. The situation escalated in a matter of days simply because of the already existing hate towards Pokimane. 
Many said that Gideon sent hate her way, however it was more like Gideon throwing premium gasoline on a smoldering fire. It started with him making a slight dig at Pokimane that he didn't think through. Guys, 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 guys. Follow her, follow her, follow her, follow her right now, y'all. Follow her right now. Which then escalated into his fans harassing her and her fans, which was then obviously a violation of the terms of service of Twitch. And since it all happened with two major streamers, Twitch was quick to respond and ordered a ban on Gideon. This obviously angered Gideon's fans as well as other creators on both Twitch and YouTube. And when they started voicing their opinion, it naturally sent more hate towards Pokimane. It also didn't help the situation that Gideon made a YouTube video where he really went after Pokimane with very aggressive and sexist speech. If you're from Pokimane, uh, I mean, if you're from Pokimane's chat and you have a penis, I'm gonna tell you this right now. She is not going bro. I don't care how much you donated. I don't care how many hours you watch her. She is not gonna you, bro. She has a man. Bro, you, you probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear this. But I'm sorry. I'm going to break the fourth wall. And spoiler alert, she's getting down every night by another However, the mob was already sharpening their pitchforks and going after the monster no matter what. Our current society doesn't really need a reason to be angry. There are dozens of protests on a daily basis, and people seem to find a new word to be angry about every single second. So regardless of her being a woman and regardless of her actively engaging in bad behavior towards other creators, she was going to get hated on no matter what. If you are online and you make content, it's not a matter of if you get hate, but more of how much you get and the things that you say or do will multiply the hate enormously. On a video with 300 views, you will receive almost no hate and the likes ratio will be 100%. Now try the same thing on a 300k video, it's impossible. Online hate simply comes with the territory of being a creator. However, there's a part of it that you can control, and there's a part of it that you can't control. A bit like the eigenvalues of a matrix, for all the algebra lovers out there. Now this does not mean that I condone hating people online, but you are throwing gasoline on a fire when you engage in this behavior that Pokemon does. It might feel unfair to her, and she might even feel as if she's not allowed to defend herself, but think of it as being a celebrity. People are constantly trying to bait celebrities into getting angry or punching them in the face, and if they do this, they will get hit with a million dollar lawsuit, which was the goal all along. When you're in the public eye, you need to be smarter about it, and it means letting things go, because fighting it only makes it worse.